Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video, we're going to talk about furnace repair. Yeah, I'm just Joe Blow. I'm not a qualified technician or anything like that. So take this with a grain of salt. It's things I've learned uh, over the past year. Did have a repair guy out, um, worked with him through the, all of this. And uh, the problem did come back recently. And we have a very, very cold weather pattern about to hit here in the next day or two. So I wanted to make sure everything was good to go. I'll show a little video clip here of the problem. Uh, you see there the furnace was flashing three times and looking at the panel uh, inside there it shows kind of the error codes on a piece of paper there and three flashes, something to do with the pressure switch. Anyways, uh, you can see uh, in the video here I'm just uh, have my drill and I'm taking off the uh, this, this is not the motor that's, that creates airflow. This is like a motor that um, I believe it, it removes the carbon monoxide, the burned gases, and sucks them out from the uh, furnace and, and kicks them out of the exhaust out of the house. And so uh, I've got a flashlight here. I have done this uh, in the past. I watched the uh, repair guy do this. Um, and essentially, the first year when this happened, uh, I thought it was a pressure switch because that's what the error message was pointing to, and it's possible it can be the pressure switch, but why is a pressure switch triggering this? And found out last year, at least in my situation, what's happening is you get these big temperature changes uh, or you get really, really wet conditions outside. And uh, when the air intake comes in, uh, you need air for your furnace to burn uh, safely so that's not using up all the oxygen in your house. So one of those pipes uh, is bringing air into the house and one of those pipes is uh, exhaust. And so what happens is uh, you get really uh, moist air or big temperature change and uh, water collects in the system, especially in the exhaust. Uh, so that there's a little motor there in the middle that's spinning and that's what I'm essentially using uh, my drill to take off the screws and now I'm disconnecting the exhaust uh, connection to the piping that goes outside and that's uh, of course before working on any of this I turned off power to my furnace of course uh, it should be obvious but anyways uh, as I pull this out you're gonna see um, video clip where I am kind of looking to see what kind of water I have here so um, I think I'm gonna go grab that uh, camera that I have sitting there and uh, get my flashlight just because it's kind of dark in there. You can see water in there, quite a bit of water actually, um, in this whole system. Uh, and including in the furnace itself, I think I will be flashing the flashlight um, in the, the metal part where um, all the fins are that collect all the heat right in there. And that's the exhaust part after everything burns. Uh, I think we'll head back into that section in a bit. But anyway, I get the shop vac and uh, Having kind of looked at other videos, talked to the repair guy last year, um, I thought before calling him out, I'm going to do the basics. And that is make sure you don't have water in any of your system that's going to affect the pressure switch. So here I am uh, with the shop vac sucking the water out of this uh, fan motor and uh, exhaust fan motor, um, tipping it upside down, making sure I really get the water out of there. Also, I'm being careful when I do this because that the back of this fan motor that hooks into the furnace itself, there is a gasket there. Uh, there's like a green gasket that goes around it. There's also a plastic seal that kind of popped off when I pull it off. So I put everything back together properly before uh, turning the furnace back on. But uh, I will say that after doing this procedure, I had the furnace shut off multiple times. Uh, yeah, sorry about the underwear showing there. I, Kind of like the old plumber right only i'm a furnace repairman same deal anyway um obviously my sweater needs to be longer um anyways uh after sucking all the water out of the various hoses and, and areas here um that water will create a problem for the pressure switch because it's the pressure switch's job is at least one of the important jobs to make sure nothing is blocking the uh exhaust of those dangerous gases because then you get co2 poisoning so it's not a joke to kind of ignore. So, but if water gets in there, that's gonna also affect the pressure switch and it's gonna think something's uh, blocking the exhaust of the uh, CO2. 
but in this case it was just water that was kind of messing with the measurement of the pressure switch. So anyways, uh, long story short is sucked out all the water out of the different places that it would collect, which is in this motor and in the uh, area where the fins are in, in the uh, furnace itself, as well as the various hoses that connect into the pressure switch. There's that plastic thing that I said popped off when I pulled everything off and it kind of fits into three um, demarcation marks to make sure it's on properly, which I did. And uh, you just made sure, and here I am looking in those fins in the furnace and I did see a fair bit of water in there. So I do think you're, we're gonna have uh, me show with the camera um, what that water looked like. There is quite a bit in there. Um, and that's just condensation. If you have a lot of wetness in the air, it's going to collect in there and usually you think a furnace would be designed to be able to handle all that and it generally is and there's an exhaust uh, drainage on the right hand side which I end up sucking out as well make sure that's not plugged um, but I guess it's lots of water gets in there then you get into this situation so here I am sucking that side port sorry that the camera doesn't show it but on the side there is where there's a small little uh, water exhaust that's supposed to drain out all the water into my sump pit and that's what this big black pipe is with uh, the red shutoff valve there that's uh, a sump pit where all the water goes in from the basement bathroom and and drainage from the furnace here as well there's also uh, a little drain hose here that was installed in a previous video I made about the furnace which the uh, repair man installed to try to deal with all the wetness coming in the exhaust but clearly that's not enough. The wetness isn't necessarily in the upper part of the exhaust pipe, it's in the furnace. And so, you know, I may have to once a year uh, get my shop vac and suck out all the water out of this. Uh, worst case, best case is just, you know, once every so often, every three to five years, this may happen where there's a really wet time of year and the furnace is working hard and a lot of water builds up in there and kind of plugs things. So. That's essentially what's happening for me in this situation. Uh, you can see I'm getting the camera kind of showing in there how I cleaned it all out. There's no more water in there. There's a fair bit. Now I'm looking in the back part of the motor. There was a lot of water. I can hear it slushing when that motor would turn on. Also in here, there was a lot of water in there and I sucked it all out with the shop vac. And then there you can see the exhaust water. That's where all the water goes out into uh, this side stuff and that's the new this clear hose is the new hose that the furnace repairman installed last year and there's the uh, exhaust port uh, showing there as well so anyways um, after doing this uh, the furnace has been working perfectly fine for a day and a half and I did not have a day and a half without issues over the last three days it kept you know every five hours or so it, it would trip the pressure switch just because there was so much water in there it couldn't evaporate it was uh, causing issues with the pressure switch and uh, you definitely don't want that issue. So first step was uh, let's suck out all the water and see if the problem comes back. So far, day and a half in, we're good. And uh, I'll do some follow-ups in the description in the comments uh, as we progress here. But I suspect we'll be fine for the rest of the winter, or at least until we have another really wet uh, weather pattern or t big temperature change.
something's in the water. Something's in the way.